Hello Puppet fans! And welcome to this lecture. In this lecture we will learn about Puppet DSL language, Puppet resources, classes and node definition. Puppet uses its own configuration language, which was designed to be accessible to sysadmins. The Puppet language does not require much formal programming experience and its syntax was inspired by the Nagios configuration file format. The core of the Puppet language is declaring resources. Every other part of the language exists to add flexibility and convenience to the way resources are declared. Groups of resources can be organized into classes which are larger units of configuration. While a resource might describe a single file or a package, a class can describe everything needed to configure an entire service or application, including any number of packages, config files, service daemons, and maintenance tasks. Smaller classes can then be combined into larger classes which describe entire custom system roles such as database server or web application worker. Nodes that serve different roles will generally get different sets of classes. The task of configuring which classes will be applied to a given node is called node classification. Nodes can be classified in the Puppet language using node definitions. They can also be classified using node-specific data from outside your manifests such as that from an ENC or Hira. Although Puppet's language is built around describing resources, and the relationships between them, in a declarative way, several parts of the language do depend on evaluation order. The most notable of these are variables, which must be set before they are referenced. Puppet language files are called manifests, and are named with the .pp file extension. Puppet manifest can consists of the following things. Files, resources, templates, nodes, resources and, classes. Resources are the fundamental unit for modeling system configurations. Each resource describes some aspect of a system, like a specific service or package. A resource declaration is an expression that describes the desired state for a resource and tells Puppet to add it to the catalog. When Puppet applies that catalog to a target system, it manages every resource it contains, ensuring that the actual state matches the desired state. Resource types Every resource is associated with a resource type which determines the kind of configuration it manages. Puppet has many built-in resource types, like files, cron jobs, services. For information about the built-in resource types, check the link https colon slash slash puppet dot com slash docs slash puppet slash six dot one slash type dot html. You can also add new resource types to Puppet. Define types are lightweight resource types written in the Puppet language. Custom resource types are written in Ruby, and have access to the same capabilities as Puppet's built-in types. Relationships and ordering By default, Puppet applies resources in the order they're declared in their manifest. However, if a group of resources must always be managed in a specific order, you should explicitly declare such relationships with relationship metaparameters, chaining arrows, and the require function. You can create relationships between two resources or groups of resources using the hyphen and a greater than sign and a tilde and a greater than sign operators. Ordering arrow a hyphen and a greater than sign, applies the resource on the left before the resource on the right. Notifying arrow, a tilde and a greater than sign, applies the resource on the left first. If the left hand resource changes, 
the right hand resource will refresh. Like an above example for NTP, ntp.conf is applied first, and notifies the NTPD service if it changes. Relationship Metaparameters Puppet uses four metaparameters to establish relationships, and you can set each of them as an attribute in any resource. The value of any relationship metaparameter should be a resource reference or array of references, pointing to one or more target resources. Before Applies a resource before the target resource. Require Applies a resource after the target resource. Notify Applies a resource before the target resource. The target resource refreshes if the notifying resource changes. Subscribe Applies a resource after the target resource. The subscribing resource refreshes if the target resource changes. The two examples below create the same ordering relationship. In this example OpenSh server package will get installed first or before the file resource. And file resource will get configured after package resource. If we explain in simple manner package creates the default files, like for NTP configuration files, you need NTP package. So NTP files have the dependencies on NTP packages, and the package will always come first. In this example we have the notifying relationship between file and service resource. In this example file resource for SSHD configuration file, we notify to SSHD service or SSHD service resource will subscribe to SSHD underscore config file resource. Means if there will be any SSHD underscore config file changes it will notify to SSHD service to reload, and SSHD service should be refreshed only if there is a file change to its subscribed SSHD underscore config file resource. Classes Classes are named blocks of Puppet code that are stored in modules for later use and are not applied until they are invoked by name. They can be added to a node's catalog by either declaring them in your manifests or assigning them from an ENC. Classes generally configure large or medium-sized chunks of functionality, such as all of the packages, config files, and services needed to run an application. Defining classes Defining a class makes it available for later use. It doesn't yet add any resources to the catalog, to do that you must declare it or assign it from an ENC. Like in below example we have defined a base class to manage password file resource but we have not declared it yet. Inheritance Classes can be derived from other classes using the inherits keyword. This allows you to make special case classes that extend the functionality of a more general base class. If a base class has parameters, those parameters must either have default values, or have their values supplied by automatic external data lookup. You can't specify values in the Puppet language for parameters in an inherited class. Inheritance causes three things to happen. When a derived class is declared, its base class is automatically declared first, if it wasn't already declared elsewhere. The base class becomes the parent scope of the derived class, so that the new class receives a copy of all of the base class's variables and resource defaults. Code in the derived class is given special permission to override any resource attributes that were set in the base class. Class inheritance should be used very sparingly, generally only in the following situations. When you need to override resource attributes in the base class. 
To let a params class provide default values for another class's parameters. Declaring classes. Declaring a class in a puppet manifest adds all of its resources to the catalog. You can declare classes in node definitions, at top scope in a site manifest, and in other classes or defined types. Declaring classes isn't the only way to add them to the catalog. You can also assign classes to nodes with an ENC. Classes are singletons, although a given class can have very different behavior depending on how its parameters are set. The resources in it will only be evaluated once per Puppet has two main ways to declare classes. Include like and resource like. Include like behavior. The include, require, contain, and hira underscore include functions let you safely declare a class multiple times, no matter how many times you declare it. A class will only be added to the catalog once. This can allow classes or defined types to manage their own dependencies, and lets you create overlapping role classes where a given node can have more than one role. Resource-like behavior Resource-like class declarations require that you only declare a given class once. They allow you to override class parameters at compile time and will fall back to external underscore data for any parameters you don't override. Node Definition A node definition or node statement is a block of Puppet code that will only be included in matching nodes catalogs. This feature allows you to assign specific configurations to specific nodes. Node statements are an optional feature of Puppet. They can be replaced by or combined with an external node classifier, or you can eschew both and use conditional statements with facts to classify nodes. Unlike more general conditional structures, node statements only match nodes by name. By default, the name of a node is its cert name, which defaults to the node's fully qualified domain name. Node definitions should go in the main manifest. The main manifest can be a single file, or a directory containing many files. In the example above, only www.example.com would receive the Apache and Squid classes, and only db1.example.com would receive the MySQL class. Ok, so let's summarize all these definitions. Puppet language is a declarative domain specific language, DSL. It defines states, not procedures. Puppet code is written in manifests, files with PP extension. In the code, we declare resources that affect elements of the system, files, packages, services. Resources are grouped in classes which may expose parameters that affect their behavior. Classes and configuration files are organized in modules. Ok, so in this lecture we learned about about Puppet DSL language. I hope you have enjoyed it. If you have time feel free to move on to next lecture.